<laughs> I like that. So I should just go into prophesy. Because she has preached, she has taught. Can anyone teach better than that? Let's put our hands together for her. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I, I have really enjoyed uh, being here. It's, it's wonderful. And uh, I think I should have told you that um, uh, it's not by accident that I, I find myself among women. Uh, it's part of my calling. <laughs> and I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, the Lord spoke to me in 1988. Uh, that's when he called me and he just, we, we married uh, uh, 1988, February. And uh, be, by November, October, the Lord made it very clear to me that he had called me, given me a ministry to liberate women into their destiny. Amen. Amen. And uh, so it is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, that was a very, very powerful word. The part that I found, it was just awesome. And then the Lord gave me, uh, 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 you know what? And the Lord gave me four daughters. They all love the Lord. And they are all serving God. And then on top of that, then God gave me three grandchildren, daughters. Ish. To confirm the ministry to the women. <laughs> uh, so I have eight of them plus my wife. So, so you know, I'm in the right place. I'm in the, I'm very much in the right place. Amen. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I love my daughters. They are just awesome. And uh, I think the Lord just knew that I needed a lot of love. Because daughters know how to love. Amen. And especially their dad. Amen. Wow. I feel like we have finished. And she's saying prophesy. <laughs> I really feel you. Are, I feel the visionary, the lady, uh, the pastor. You, I feel like you have just wrapped it up. But uh, since you still want me to prophesy. Uh, can you give me 30 minutes to, to share? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll prophesy from the Bible. Not the prophecy you want. <laughs> oh, amen, amen. Yeah, I would like to thank you uh, again uh, for having invited me. And uh, this has, it is now on my calendar. Uh, every year, the lionesses. So thank you very much. Let's put our hands together. Amen. Amen. And uh, I came just for this. I've got so many friends in the United States of America, but I, you know, the level God has brought me to, I just come for what God sends me. After I finish my one week, I'm back to Africa. And because of a lot of assignments. Father God, we want to thank you for this uh, time that you have given us. I know the word that, Lord, you have given me will bring will consolidate and strengthen and encourage. Oh Lord, we thank you. So speak to our hearts again. We thank you for what you have already spoken to us about Christ, the Messiah, marking his own uh, territory and marking his own marks, claiming that which belongs to him and breaking every walls of resistance. Father, we want to thank you that now, Lord, I can build on that. So speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to share with you uh, something very uh, briefly. I pray it briefly. Growing in grace and rank. These two words. Growing in grace and rank. These two words, grace and rank. Growing in grace and rank. Let's start with 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. 
they have uh, have they retired <laughs> no they are still there we appreciate you so much the media people we appreciate you so much but by the grace of god but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace to me was not without effect By the grace of God, in other words, if you are amazed, if you are blessed, if you really admire, if you are really, what can I say, you are amazed at what God is doing in and through my life, I want you to know it is by grace. If you are amazed by the revelations that I have, if you are amazed by the insights that I have into the word, if you are amazed by the revelation I'm getting from God for the Gentiles, for the church, it is by the grace of God that I am what I am. If you are amazed at the ability that I'm able to persevere, if you are amazed at the ability that I'm persecuted, opposed, but I do not give up, I want you to know it is by the grace of God that I am what I am. And I also want to let you know the grace of God was not without effect. In other words, this grace of God I've experienced has brought tremendous fruit and result. Growing in grace and rank grace god's enabling power when god calls you is not really counting on what you are able to do he is just looking at you as a vessel but he's counting on what he will be able to do through you and that's what we call grace so that's why you cannot have any excuse that, Lord, you cannot use me. I cannot do it. I am not able because it's not you. It is his grace at work through your life. And that's why by the grace of God, you are able to do anything that God calls you to do. By the grace. As I was meditating on this word grace, the ability to do what your ability cannot do. That's grace. You have ability, but what God is going to do, it's beyond your ability. So it is God's ability that does what your ability cannot do. Women of God. I'm sharing on growing in grace and rank. Acts 4 verse 33 Acts 4 verse 33, with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and much grace was upon them all, much grace. I pray that you will experience a grace of God and I pray that you will go out of this place with much grace much grace they were able to testify they were able to preach they were able to do so many things but the bible says and much grace was upon them all when the grace of god comes upon you people will not understand and they will not comprehend what will be happening in your life and they will realize this is only but the finger of God grace when you are tired grace when you are coming to a point of giving up grace when you are not able to fight or the powers that are rising up against you grace when you are resisted or surrounded by opposition grace when you have no money but you have to save God, grace, 
much grace and I came to tell you much grace is upon you much grace is upon you receive the grace of God and walk in the grace of God and God who has begun a good work in you he will perfect it he will finish it he will establish you you will raise those children because of grace you will educate those children because of grace you will finish that assignment because of grace and I say receive too much grace too much grace is coming upon you that's why you cannot say I will fail that's why you cannot say I am a failure that's why you are not going to say anything because of grace you will run and overtake because of grace. You will build that business because of grace. You will build that ministry because of grace. You will overtake even those who are proud rivals working against you. Because of grace, you will rise up again. Things are not working out and things were not working out. And everybody counted you off and out. But you will rise up again because of grace. Grace, grace, grace. <laughs> it's not because I'm educated. Thank God for the education. Thank God for my papers. Thank God for the PhD. Thank God for my connections. Thank God for everything around my life. But they cannot take the place of grace. Well, how come things are working out for you? Grace. Uh, every, everywhere I go, people are asking. Uh, Bishop Nwaka, people are talking about it in the nation and many places. How did you raise your children like this? I just tell them, I begin to, I begin to look for any keys or, uh, that I did or any book that I read or anything special I did. I eventually come and find something called grace. That's why the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, they labor in vain. That's called grace. Therefore, I have no reason, I have no reason to be proud. Because of grace, it is not me at work, but God at work through me. Therefore, I give him all the glory, and I give him all the honor. I came to tell you, ladies, grace is upon you. You will break out because of grace. You will finish your education because of grace. You will be able to build that marriage because of grace. And some of you are staying with very difficult husbands very difficult husbands but you will be able to manage because of grace sit down Sharababa. say grace say grace say grace grace say grace say grace the grace of God is enough. You said I should prophesy. I came to prophesy. The grace of God is coming upon your life. The grace of God is coming upon your life. Where you failed, that's where God is starting. Where you failed, that's where God is starting. I said the grace of God. Because of the grace of God over your life. They said you will fail, but you will not fail. And this conference of the lionesses will move from strength to strength from glory to glory until you have no place where to fill your people shout with me and say grace therefore you will not be able to fail you are not going to fail because of grace Rakanda Rabba Shalababa sit up give me Isaiah 26 verse 12 It's a scripture that has come just to me as I'm speaking. And if it's not the one, yes, 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 yes. Can we shout it together? Can we shout it together? Can we shout it together? I didn't say read it. I said shout. One, two, three, four. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Oh, come on, give him praise. I said give him praise. Oh, I said, give him praise. 
Let us read. Let us read again. Let us read again. Because God is going to accomplish things for you. It is not you at work. It is not you running. Let's shout it again. One, two, three, four. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Give him praise. Give him praise. I declare peace in your life. The Lord establishes peace in your family. Peace in your body. Peace in your family. Peace at work. Peace in your business. The Lord is establishing peace and everything you are going to do. Yes, yes, yes. God shall do it for you. I declare the Lord has done it for you. I say you are a woman of accomplishment. You are a woman of accomplishment. You are going to accomplish. You are going to accomplish. That project is too small for you. That business is too small for you. The devil is a liar. Nothing shall, shall nothing, nothing, nothing shall intimidate you. Nothing shall intimidate you. Shout it again. Shout it again for the last time. One, two, three, four. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have accomplished for us. Give him praise. Sit down. Grace. Grace. <laughs> I say grace. <laughs> oh, I say grace. They may not like you, but grace. They may speak against you, but grace. They may try to destroy you, but grace. They may gossip you, but grace. They may not like you. They may want you to fail, but grace. And that's why God does not need to consult your neighbor in order to bless you. He does not need to consult your enemies in order to use you. Grace. They may not like your personality, but they have, they do not understand the grace of God in your life. Excuse me. If you want to work against me, work against the grace. You cannot stop me unless you can stop the grace. Nobody can stop the grace because the grace is God's ability that does what your ability cannot do. It is the hand of God at work through you. That's what we call grace. Grow in grace. As you come out of this place, I declare you shall go in grace and much grace. The Bible says the apostles, they testified to the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, and much grace was working and it was above them all receive the grace to build that business receive the grace to build that family receive the grace to fight that war receive the grace to overcome receive the grace to feed the hungry receive the grace receive the grace receive the grace receive the grace you are not going to quit because of the grace. You are not going to give up because of the grace. The devil is a liar. You may not have people to support you. You may not have a husband. You may, you may be a widow. You may be a divorcee. But I don't care. The grace of God is sufficient. I came to tell you. That's what Paul said. Paul said. I pray to the Lord. Oh Lord, take away this stone out of my flesh. Take away this stone. I don't know what stone that you are having in your life. I don't know what situation that you may call a thorn in your life. Every woman and every man has his own thorn. I don't know what situation that you are having in your life. Is it sickness? Is it disease? Is it infirmity that is coming into your life? What is that thorn? He said, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. The Lord said, I am not taking it away, but my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, when I am weak, that's when I am strong. I came to tell you, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God is enough for you. The power of God is enough for you. The grace of God is enough for you. I see you coming out. I see you overcoming. The grace, the grace. 
when I am weak, that's when I am strong because of the grace. So there is no demon that is going to stop you because of grace. There is no rival. There is no enemy. You may have been born alone. You may be alone in your family and things are rough and you may not even be married. You may be a single mother with children. You don't even know how to raise them. But I came to tell you, grace. Shout with me and say grace. You may not have a husband, but grace. You may not have income, but grace. You may not have anything that everybody prides himself, prides herself, but grace. Shandarabos, shout with me and say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Grace. That is the hand of God over your life. That is the hand of God through your life. If you look at Bishop Nwaka today, it is only but grace. That's why I'm standing today. That's why I'm running from nation to nation. When the devil rises up and thinking is going to clear me and finish me, the devil has no idea of the hand of God and the grace of God within my life. And God takes care of his investments. He cannot let the investments in you go to waste. And that's why you are standing today because of grace. You are alive today and many of your friends are dead. It's not because you are holy, holy than them. It's not you are clever than them. It is grace. That's why you survived that accident. Grace. That's why you survived that disease. Grace. Sit down. Grace. Mm. Grace brings me on my knees. Grace makes me humble. Grace makes me give God the glory. Grace makes me realize I'm flesh and blood. Grace makes me know God can use anybody, but he chose to use me. Grace makes me come before him in humility and worship and adoration. And I said, Lord, why did you choose me anyway? Grace. You are going out full of grace. Women, you are going out full of grace. Let nothing intimidate you. Let nothing scare you. Let nothing stand and intimidate you. But I want to tell you, you can do all things. And you will do all things in Christ Jesus. Because of grace. Do you know the power of grace? That's why Paul says I am what I am today. Because of the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am today. And this grace was without effect. In other words, wherever I went, there were results. This grace has effect. I said this grace has effect. Where I touch, people will see that somebody touched. I release the grace of God over your life. As you release yourself to walk under his hand, you will see the grace of God in your business because your hands are anointed. Wherever you touch, the grace shall be evident. It shall be evident. And who is going to receive the glory? Jehovah. Shalom Amarakasa. When Paul is saying grace, he understands where he's coming from. He knows he is once upon a time a persecutor of the church. He was so zealous destroying the church. And now he's so zealous proclaiming Christ and building the church that he was destroyed. As he looks at him like his life, he says grace. In other words, I don't deserve where I am, but grace. I don't even deserve to stand on the altar, but grace. I don't even deserve to lead people into worship because I know my life, but grace. 
true grace brings you on your knees. When people walk in grace, there will be no competition. When people walk in grace, there will be no competition. How can I compete against you? Because it's not me, but him at work. The reason why we compete, it's because we think it is us who are anointed, us who are working. Grace. Grace. Have you ever been there where people are asking you, how did you manage to build such a powerful congregation? What is the key? You try to look at your prayer life. You try to look at this and that. Then the answer is grace. How have you managed to build your family, to raise up your sons, your three boys, Paul and his friends, Grace, and the coming daughter, Grace. Bishop Noak, how do you manage to travel if I were to show you my itinerary? If I was to tell you, for instance, like August or September, where every day, and no exaggeration, every day is marked. I will be there. I'll be doing this every day. How do you manage? And you have got a wife and you have got children. Grace. And you have got a local church. Grace. That's why you cannot leave this conference without understanding the power of grace. Hallelujah. So growing in grace and rank. Ephesians 4 verse 7. Susan, are you my timekeeper? You are the one who said prophesy, so you are my timekeeper. Ephesians 4 verse 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. To each one of us, grace. So there are no special people for grace. To each one of us, grace. And we have different types of grace. And when, when I see, <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what grace simply means? The way God operates in you. It is God operating in you in a unique way. And he operates in me in a unique way. That's what you call grace. Therefore, I cannot imitate you. Because what I see through you, it is God. Working in you and through you, that we call grace. No one can ever be like you and compete with you. Impossible. The people you admire, they actually admire you. Hello, hello, hello. They, exactly. The people you admire, you wish you could do it. They admire you. It is the same God working through you in a unique way. He's the same God who has chosen to work through me as a prophet, apostle grace Romans 12 6 Romans 12 6 look at this we have different gifts according to the grace given us so grace is critical it's foundational if a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. But the gifts are according to what? The grace. Excuse me. Don't do what you have no grace for. I wish I can say it again. Let nobody push you to do something you have no grace for. And especially as pastors, and as bishops and apostles, we are guilty of this sin. To ask people to do what they have no grace for. We give people responsibilities 
We give people titles and offices. And yet we have not sought the face of God. They have no grace. And we call them they have failed. They did not fail. They were in the wrong shoes, in the wrong office. Yes. People you call failures are not failures. And some of you, once upon a time, you were called a failure. I came to tell you today, I cancel that word failure. It's canceled. I say it is canceled. You are not a failure. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, does a failure look like me? Can you see any failure here? Say, no, 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 no. Somebody asks you to be, somebody asks you to do the work of a pastor. And yet you have no grace of a pastor. And yet you are an evangelist. And then somebody begins to assess you as a pastor. And the grace you do not have of a pastor. And then they say you have failed as a pastor. Nonsense. Somebody asks you to do the work of an evangelist, to be the evangelist, different from the scripture when the scripture says, do the work of an evangelist. They ask you to be an evangelist, yet in your heart, you are a teacher. And afterwards, they begin to count how many nations you have gone, crusades, and how many souls you have brought. And they say failure. I say you are not a failure. You did not just discover your grace. And I came to tell you today, get rid of those shoes that God never gave you. Let them go. Let them go. All those titles, let them go. Hello, hello, hello. That is a prophetic action. I have never done this in this place. And I have never done this anywhere. It is a prophetic action. Some of you, you are walking in shoes that are not yours. Come on, get the shoes that the Holy Spirit has given you. Get your shoes. Get your ministry. Get your office. Get into your grace. And you will run. And you will run. And you shall overtake the devil is a liar discover the grace of god in your life sit down i can see this is serious even the children are throwing off their shoes hallelujah i now prophesy to you receive receive your right shoes Come on, bring my shoe. Receive your right shoe. Receive. You are entering into that which God destined. Into that which God destined. You are entering into that prophetic ministry. You are entering into that grace of a millionaire. You are entering into that grace. You shall make millions. The devil is a liar. How many people were called failures and yet they were not meant for that? You ask Bill Gates, he will tell you the story. You tell, you ask all these great men who have accomplished I declare to you you shall shine in your office you shall shine in your ministry you shall shine in your grace the devil is a liar stop comparing yourself with any woman with any man grace over your life grace over your gifting i release all her. oh yes oh yes somebody said prophesy this is the way i prophesy i came to tell you this is the way i operate this is how the lord works i came to tell you i see i see a woman with wings running and flying overtaking and going and ascending to places where you have never been grace the devil is a liar. That's why God says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I separated you. I called you to be a prophet. That is the grace. And then he says, today I appoint you to be a prophet to the nations. So you are not going to be an apostle. When God has called you to be a prophet, you are not going to be anything else. I don't care 
We have so many false prophets now. Everybody wants to be a prophet. We have so many false apostles. Everybody wants to be an apostle. We have so many false bishops. Everybody wants to be a bishop. Sit down. Grace. Tell your neighbor grace. Tell your neighbor grace. Oh yes, grace. Tell somebody, say tell somebody neighbor. Said neighbor. I just want to be me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I just want to be me. Not what you want me to be. Excuse me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I don't want to be what you want me to be. I want to be me because me walks in my grace. Shalababaraba. Shenderebebebebe. We have just started the conference. The lioness has just started. The lioness conference has just started. I say the lioness conference has just started. The devil is a liar. The devil doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know what you are made of. They look at you from outside. But God looks at you inside. And the Bible says, henceforth, we don't look at man with an eye of flesh. We look at man with an eye of revelation. Grace! Everybody shout, Grace! Everybody shout, Grace! Some of you are thinking, some of you, some of you think we are, some of you are thinking we are closing. We have just started. Tell somebody we have just started. The Lord has just started. Oh, just say the Lord has started. Because this is a day that the Lord is releasing you. The Lord is ushering you. The Lord is shooting you out into your grace. You will not die before you walk in your grace. You will not die before the grace of God is fully made manifest in and through your life. Death will have to be suspended. Until you have finished everything written about you in the books of heaven, grace, sit on. They think they know you, they don't know you. They think they know you, they don't. You are a mystery, only God knows you. Only you and God know you. Tell somebody, only God know me and me know me. Grace. I say 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 grace. That's why there is nothing that I'm afraid of because of the grace. That's why there is no project that is too big for me. It is grace. If God says, ask of me and I'll give you nations as your inheritance, you are not going to be scared because the grace is enough. It corresponds to the assignment. God cannot give you an assignment and less than the grace. The reason why God has given you a burden for nations, it's because of the grace. The assignment cannot be less than the grace. So the grace God gives you has to correspond to the assignment and project. That's why David comes out. He tells, he tells the guys, he tells his brothers, brothers, you don't know me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you don't know me. We come from the same father, but you don't know me. We come from the same mother, but you don't know me. You don't know the grace that I carry. And that's why they rack under the boat. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Even your husband doesn't know you. He only knows you in part. Even if you don't know him, you know a part. 
and then they say you cannot fight that giant that Goliath and then he says excuse me you don't know the grace over my life I'm sharing today on growing in grace and rank you don't know the grace over my life or oh, once upon a time a bear came and it wanted to steal the ship I rose the grace of God manifested upon me I did not quit I did not run away I killed the bear and the lion came I killed the lion who is this uncircumcised Philistine because I know the grace of God may the grace of God come upon your life abound in your life may the Lord raise you up the way he raised David and may you kill your giants you don't know me you don't know me and then the king says fine you want to go and fight okay come let's give you the armor you wear like this and he says according to the grace that God has given me I don't use what you have given me what you have given me use it yourself if you have failed to use it why give it to me and as for me God is enough ladies and a few gentlemen I can see in the house I came to tell you the grace of God is sufficient that's what you need that's why you are not going to trade anything for the presence of God you're not going to trade anything for the grace of God thank God for your education thank God for your papers thank God for your connections but they cannot take the place of God they cannot take the place of grace that's why sometimes God will take and wipe away all these things from you not because he's against you, not because he hurts you, but simply because he wants to teach you grace. Sit down. Oh my God. Grace. Mm -mm. Grace. Mm -mm. Grace. Oh, grace. Grace, Apostle Bishop uh, Robinson is standing today because of grace. Some people ran away from his ministry. They thought it's going to be finished, but they did not understand the grace. Uh, you're not fighting against the man. <laughs> it is the grace. Everybody can go, but then suddenly something is about to rise up again. Why? Grace. And the grace of Paul that started churches from nothing. Grace. People ran away from Bishop Rocker. And everybody was talking about him and thinking he's finished. And even Bishop Rocker sometimes thought he's finished. But then he realized and remembered grace. That's why I'm going to humble myself. I'm not going to get the glory that belongs to God. Never, and I will never, because I know flesh, and I know blood, and whatever I have accomplished, and whatever I'm accomplishing is grace. Women are coming out of this place full of the power of God, the dynamis of God, energize. Nothing scares you. Even those watching me all over the world, nothing scares you. Look at this, Peter, First Peter five ten. First Peter five ten. Grace. Shall we read together the scripture? Are you ready to read the scripture? Are you ready to read the scripture? <laughs> some of you thought we had closed the conference we've just started hallelujah and he reserves the best at the end can we all reach together one two three four and the god of all grace oh pause pause there's a comma there you must observe comma that comma was put there for a purpose. Let us read again. One, two, three, four. And the God. No, I haven't heard you. You have to read the word and release the spirit of the word. One, two, three, four. And the God of all grace. 
comma must be observed <laughs> because it simply means ponder on what you have read and now let's read after comma one two three four who called you to his eternal glory in christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast what's going to do that grace why god is god of what of all grace he's not god who has only has little grace Congratulations, you really did well at school. The report got me. I'm proud of you. Huh? Do you know why you're making it? Grace. <laughs> Sit down. Grace. Grace. Oh my goodness. I, I said growing in grace and rank. Let me finish the other word, rank. Now look at these two guys. Paul, uh, Saul, Saul had rank, but he had no grace. And David had grace, but had no rank. So eventually, David got both rank and grace. So that's why I'm saying growing in grace and rank. Now this is a very, very critical subject. Very crucial. We, all, we may all preach. We may all have the grace to preach. But that does not mean we are having the same rank. Hello, hello, hello. We can all worship. We can all do great things. We can all be charismatic preachers. But we are not having the same rank. And that's why you, we need to grow in grace and rank. Look at this. I love this. Joel chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. If you're tired, I can close my Bible. And then we will finish next year. Can I close my Bible? We finish next year. By the way, it's our, it's our conference, women's conference. It's our conference, women's conference. I've been baptized among women. My wife, four daughters, five, three granddaughters, eight. I dwell among women. I live among women. So I'm in the right place. <laughs> Woo. That guy, when the grandchild will come, a grandson, that son shall be really introduced. We shall really, I'll say, welcome, my friend. I've been alone for a long time. Let me teach you how to live among women. I can't wait to teach that young grandson. I don't know which daughter will give me a grandson, but it will be something big. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God bless you. Welcome, Ralph. Welcome. We missed you, Ralph. I can see now your wife feels so settled. Join your wife. She's somewhere there. Join her, join her. It's women's conference. We join them. They don't join us. We join them. Because they invited us, so we join them. Wow. Are you enjoying as I'm enjoying? Are you enjoying as I'm enjoying? I enjoy the word. You know the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know the Lord has just renewed my strength. It's like I've just started. Mm. Now look at this. Joel chapter, Joel chapter 2 verse 5. And uh, we shall be reading together. 1, 2, 3, 4. With, 1, 2, 3, 4. With a noise like that of chariots. They leap over the mountain tops. Now these are the women. These are the lionesses. You know what they do? The lionesses. They leap. 
So in other words, there is no mountain that stops them. Shout with me and say, there is no mountain. If you are a lioness, say, there is no mountain. That stops me. That must be your attitude. Sit down. That must be your attitude. What do they do? They leap. This is Holy Ghost leaping. It is not physical leaping. Because physical leaping, you can never leap over the mountain. It is spiritual. Shout with me. Say, I leap over every mountain in my life, in my ministry, in my projects. Say, nothing stops me. Sit down. I came to tell you, you are just unstoppable. Do you know how many hours I'm speaking? Three hours. Prophet Sadu anointing. I'm speaking for three hours. Uh, Prophet Sadu anointing. Prophet Sadu just came to Zambia. So he gave me an anointing to speak for three hours. I used to speak for one hour. And I said, how can this prophet speak for two hours and, and three hours and no one is going out? I said, I catch this. I said, I catch this. <laughs> so if you are thinking of me stopping, forget it all. Forget it all. Tell your neighbor, prophet, start do anointing. Okay, let's go. Verse 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. With a noise like that of I can't hear you. 1, 2, 3, 4. With a noise like that of chariots. They leap over the mountain tops like a crackling fire, consuming stubble, like a mighty army drawn up for battle. You are a mighty army drawn up for battle. You are not scared of any battle. Let the witches come. Let the wizards come. Let the principalities come. Let the freemasons come. You are ready for battle. Shout and say, I am ready. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Shout, I am ready for battle. Sit down. The devil will not scare you. The devil will not scare you. No wizard will scare you. No witch will scare you. No failure will scare you. No poverty will scare you. No politician will scare you. Drawn up for battle. Let's read verse 6. Come on. 1, 2, 3, 4. At the sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every first turns spell because you have appeared. Every demonic face shall turn pale. Every witchcraft face shall turn pale. Every wizard face shall turn pale. Every Jezebel fight in your ministry shall turn pale. Everybody say shall turn pale. Sit down. You, you, you haven't seen anything yet. Or you, you haven't seen anything yet. Look at verse 7. Let us read verse 7. As you read it so it becomes a, a power, a grace released to you. 1, 2, 3, 4. They, 1, 2, 3, 4. They charge like warriors. I say you are a warrior. I say you are a warrior. Receive the anointing of a warrior. Receive the anointing of a warrior. Receive the anointing. Receive 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 they charge like warriors we are not timid we are not fearful we are not quitters we are not those who give up oh shakarabo shata that's why the bible says we have been struck down but we have not been destroyed we are warriors shout and say we are warriors sit down let's read Verse 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, they charge like warriors. They scare wolves like soldiers. So there is no war that stops you. Let's continue, 1, 2, 3, 4. They all march in a line, disciplined. They are not swerving from their vision. They do not jostle each other. 
they do not fight each other they do not step on each other they are a disciplined army there is no gossip there is no jostling there is no competition there is no fighting they don't jostle each other say and say shout and say we don't jostle each other sit down sit down not at your level at your level talking over somebody tell you somebody sit down sit down tell somebody say at my level i can't say so we don't jostle each other here you know jostling pushing one another we are an army how can we take nations Bishop Robinson, when in the church there is full of jostling, in your fellowship there is full of jostling, in, uh, in all our denominations there is full of jostling. How are we going to take nations? Stepping on each other's toes, making each other uncomfortable. When are we going to focus on the enemy? When are we going to focus on Lucifer? When are we going to focus on the principalities? We are busy speaking against each other, but biting against each other. He's not supposed to be called reverend. He's not supposed to be ordained as a pastor. He's not supposed to be pastoring that church. He's not supposed to be called an evangelist, jostling each other. That is from hell. I never again shout with me and say, never again. I can't hear you say, never again. Say, we don't jostle each other here. Say, we don't jostle each other here. So in this women ministry, we don't jostle each other. If you come to jostle, say, if you come to jostle, I can't hear you. If you say you come to jostle with the spirit of jostling, repent or get out. Sit down. Look what the Bible says. The last sentence here, I like it. They plunge through defenses without breaking ranks. That's where I was going. Rabba <laughs> Shatababa. Oh my goodness. Can I have some, uh, some men come? My brother, come here. Come. Uh, stand there. And you come, 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 come. Uh, and stand there. Rabo Shalababa. Yes. So that is a, a defense. Rabo Shataba. Raf, come. Come here. Rabo Shatababa. You understand that I'm a general. And you understand I'm a general. And you are a general trainee. And you have got uh, uh, four stars there. Maybe you only have two. And you respect it and you're comfortable. You know what? You have got a lot to learn from me. You may be more gifted, charismatic than me. But I have more rank than you. I know how to handle the front line. I have the authority that you may not have in the spiritual realm you may be very eloquent but i only speak one word and heaven the dark world collapses you can have a thousand words to defeat one demon i only speak one word and every power in the enemy gets the attention so but for you you understand your rank you also know that we grow in rank you also know that rank is increased through battles rank does not come through the laying on of hands rank comes through the battles that you have fought and you have overcome so follow me the bible says you follow me clearly and you are covering my back and we have an enemy we have to cross we have to go to the other side that is a defense that is stopping us from getting into our territory to mark our territory that is a defense that is taking us from getting africa and from getting nations but we have to break through because we have the grace yes you have the skill and you have the gifting the only 
only thing that you are ranking is, you are lacking is rank. But don't, 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 don't worry. As we fight battles, there shall be increasing of ranks in your life. And the ranks don't just come through the laying on of hands. They go through the battles. So it's okay to have some scars. It's okay to have some wounds. It's okay to have some wounds. But it's not okay to quit. It's not okay to give up. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord heals you from every past. But the Lord is training you and preparing you because you are a general in the making. By the way, it was not an example. That was the word of the Lord for you. Follow me. Make sure that the wall is tight. Randabo shata. It is tight. But let's read the scripture. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You and I. What does the Bible say? Let's read verse 7. Please help us before we go to that wall. Help us read verse 7. 1, 2, 3, 4. They charge like warriors. They scare walls like soldiers. They all march in the line. Not swerving from their cause. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead. They plan through defenses without breaking rank. I declare so shall it be in your life I declare you are breaking through defenses the devil is a liar the devil knows what kind of grace you are carrying the devil knows what kind of anointing you are carrying the devil knows what kind of destiny you are carrying that's why the devil has brought this and this and this and that but I came to tell you you are breaking through this and that whatever rises up against you you are breaking through and you will not die before you accomplish your assignment Sit down. They do not break rank. There is arrogance in the body of Christ. Young boys and young girls, they have no respect for the elders. Just because they can do one or two things, they think we are on the same level. We are not on the same level. And we can never be on the same level. I like what Isaiah 48 verse 10 says. In other version it says, the Lord has graded you in the furnace of affliction. Other, other, other version says, he has refined you in the furnace of affliction. So the grading, the ranking is in the furnace. Most of these preachers, you call preachers, are fake. Pass them through the fire, they are destroyed. Pass through, through them, let them pass through the test or storm. They are destroyed. But what does Paul say? We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. We are pressed from every side, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, not, not in despair. There are so many things you may be going through in your life that will cause you not to understand, but you don't belong to the camp that quits. As a lioness. Amen. Give up! I don't want to hear any of the lionesses who has gone through our training for the last two years to be found among the quitters. Amen. Fight! Breakthrough! Amen. Impart the same attitude to your children. You cannot be raising nice boys and girls just nice in America when principalities and powers of darkness arises. Nice will not be enough for them. They must be warriors. They you teach them to charge like warriors. Haven't we taught you that a man of God, a woman of God must have four faces? The face of a lion, the face of an eagle, the face of an ox, the face of a man. You must operate in four anointings. So there's a time to be just man. Enjoy. Time to be like lion. When the devil comes to try and pick and get one of my daughters, you will not find a man. You will find a lion. Because I won't allow you to take any of my daughters to hell. A lion! And I tell people, you do not know me because I, 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 what do I say? 
Listen. If you want to, true, to know the true worker, see him under pressure. See him when demons and powers rise up against him. There is something in me that rises. That which I cannot even take any credit. There is another anointing that rises. Don't be nice to the devil. Some of you girls are nice. Especially you don't be nice to the devil. Be aggressive. Be a lioness. Right from the beginning. Because the devil will not be nice to you. And the devil will not be nice to your children. Teach them. The battle they are found in right from the young age. Teach them. Teach them. You men, you are just getting the last. Oh, things have happened. You have no idea what was happening with these women. Husbands, you're not getting back the same wives you sent here. Look at John 1 27. John 1 27. John 1 27. Sister Susan, according to Sadhu's anointing, how many more minutes am I remaining? Okay, wrong timekeeper. Thank you very much. That's why I chose you. It was deliberate. It was deliberate. John chapter 1, verse 27. Let's read together. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's read the word. One, two, three, four. He is the one who comes after me. The songs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. Understanding rank. Even I'm not able to. Because that's the work of servants to wash the feet of their masters. He says, I'm not even worthy to be a servant. Understanding rank. I'm closing shortly in 10 minutes. Look at this. Look at this. First Samuel 26 verse 9. First Samuel 26 and verse 9. First Samuel 26 and verse 9. Let's read again. 1, 2, 3, 4. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? He understood rank. I've already preached. Now I'm giving you scriptures. So that you don't just go with good emotions. You go with the word. I've already preached. Now I'm just giving you scriptures. I'm not going to explain. It is self-explanatory. Let's read together. Acts 25, verse 2 to 5. Acts 23, rather. Acts 23. This will bless you. This will really bless you because it blessed my heart. Acts 23, verse 2 to 5. Let's read 1, 2, 3, 4. At this the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. To strike Paul on the mouth. Look at this. Then uh, Paul, something happened in Paul. One, two, three, four. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sit there to judge me according to the law. Yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. He rebuked him. Verse, verse, uh, is it... Uh, okay, Paul, verse 4, let's read again verse 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Those who are standing, I can't hear you. 1, 2, 3, 4. Those who are standing near Paul said, you dare to insult God's high priest. In other words, don't you see rank? Let's go, verse 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Paul replied, 1, 2, 3, 4. Paul replied, brothers, I did not realize that he was the high priest, for it is written, do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Paul repented immediately, although the words he had spoken were very appropriate. Very appropriate. That was a demonic guy. He deserved to be crushed and wiped away by God. 
But one thing Paul realized, although this man is wicked, he's carrying an office. And that is what America has not learned to differentiate between a personality, Donald Trump, and the office of presidency that is carried. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, we will agree with everything that Donald Trump does, but there is an office, a rank that must be respected. You may not like my personality, but I carry an office, I carry a rank. That's what happened with Miriam. She forgot that Moses was carrying a rank and an office. Although he was a young brother, a younger brother, although she helped him keep him, change the nappies, protect him from the crocodiles. But time came, there was a shift. The office was given to Moses and therefore she had to respect the rank. That's the problem we're having in the church. Arrogance. Because we can all cast out demons. Arrogance. Because we can all preach. Arrogance. And that's why God is not releasing all that which he is supposed to release. Here's the last scripture for today. For this uh, session. Because I'm coming back. Tell somebody he's coming back. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 2. When I give you my Bible, it means I'm done. Yes, I've been missing you, Paul, doing that work. Uh, God bless you, my friend. You cannot carry the prophet's book and, uh, without getting in the grace and the anointing. Let us read together. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the angel who was speaking to me left. And another angel came to meet him. Let's go. Let's go on. And said to him. No, this is not the one I'm looking for. The one I'm looking for. Is it Zechariah? What is this one? The one I'm looking for. Okay, fine. I've confused the scriptures. You know it very well. And the angel of the Lord, is it Joshua? And the angel of the Lord said, uh, Satan, may the Lord rebuke you. You know it yourself. May the, uh, because the angels understand what? Rank. Lucifer was their chief ark angel. He was in charge of everything. Lucifer. Lucifer was number one. The Gabriels and the, the, the Mike among the angels. The Gabriels and the, the Michael, whatever those angels, submitted to Lucifer. So when he fell, the gifts of God, the gifts of God are without repentance. So here is Lucifer. He still has the rank. You understand in uh, the book of Job, whereby Lucifer finds himself when the sons of God, the angels of God are sitting, he also appears. So he even enters and no one stops him. And God the Father says, uh, uh, where are you coming from? And now when they are rebuking him, they realize this man has got rank. And so what does this angel say? Let's reach together. One, two, three, four. It was Zechariah chapter three. Let's reach together. One, two, three, four. The, one, two, three, four. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you, not I rebuke you. You now understand the power of attorney, the name the Lord has given us. That's why when we are rebuking the devil, what do we say? In the name. Hallelujah. So we use a higher rank. Hallelujah. So we use a higher rank. We use a higher rank. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Lucifer must bow. Every demon must bow. Every principality must bow. I wanted you to know that you have power. You have authority because of the name of Jesus. 
That's why when you are healing the sick, you heal them in the name. That's why when you are casting out demons, you cast them in the name. There is no principality. Not even the devil can stand against you. Because Jesus is the highest rank. Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise. I say give him praise. I say give him praise. I say give him praise. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Give him praise. I cannot hear you. Give him praise. I say give him praise. You have no reason to quit because you have the name that is the highest rank. You have a name that Lucifer does not have. You have a name. I don't care whether you were born again yesterday. You have a name. I don't care whether you are a widow, you are a woman. You have a name. And at the name of Jesus, every principality, every demon must obey. Hey, there is no witchcraft that can resist the highest rank. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. My goodness. Ten to two. Sharababa Sakatorobo. Just going to tongues. Just going to tongues. Just going to tongues. Oh, just going to tongues. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm excited. Even those who are watching us on television, even those who are watching us all over the world, oh, understanding rank and grace, growing in rank and in grace. Oh, just go ahead, just go ahead and just pray in tongues. Growing in grace, go, growing in grace and rank. Oh, Rabba, Sharababa, Sata. So the women of God, I hear the Lord saying, stay united. I hear the Lord saying, stay united. Don't jostle each other. I hear the Lord saying, stay united. Don't jostle each other. Jostling is for novices. Jostling is for those who are carnal. Jostling is for those who are in the flesh. Oh, Raka, Tarabosha. We have no time for competition. We have no time to show off. We have no time to prove that we are more anointed gifted than the other we don't have any time to talk about somebody we don't have any time to gossip anybody because our assignment is great and we have no time to worse no time to jostle each other you are charging like warriors go ahead and go ahead go and go ahead and pray i'm going to pray a prayer because what was happening when i was ministering there was a great impartation taking place chains were breaking people were receiving their anointing people were being baptized into the whole Holy Spirit. People, we are going, we are graduating to go into another area. You are not going back the same the way you came. Rabosha, Tarabosa, Tarabaka, Teriberiata, Rabosa, and Teremeketili, Boruburianda, Rabasa. Growing in grace and rank. I want to pray for some ladies here. You are saying, this is my word. This is my word. I want more grace. I'm going through some situation. I want some grace. I've got some projects. I want some grace. Oh, I'm going through some challenges. I want some grace. I want some grace. Some more 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 grace. Randarabo Shatalababa. Just pray in tongues. I came to tell you as a prophet of God, it is done. I came to tell you as a prophet of God it is done. I came to tell you as a prophet of God it is done. The Lord is giving you grace. There is no power. There is no adversity. There is no project. There is no future. There is no nothing that you will not be able to conquer or to manage. Pray in tongues before I pray for you. Pray in tongues before I pray for you. Pray in tongues. Oh, I'm about to join you praying in tongues. Because I also need grace. I also need grace. I need some grace in my life. I need some grace in my ministry. I'm going to prevail against every principality because of grace. Because of the grace, the hand of the Lord over my life and in me. And it's the Lord that fights my battles. That's why I'm not going to be scared of tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. As I pray for grace grace i'm also praying for your grace that you're going to experience the grace of god the grace of god 
Yes, 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 yes. Now I join you in tongues. Lord, I pray for the single mothers. I pray for the single parents. I pray for the single parents. I pray for the single parents. Lord, just a mother. She has no husband. She has no husband. There is no father in the home. I pray grace. Even those who are watching me on television all over the world. You may be a single mother. You may be a single parent. And you are saying, how am I going to raise my children? I needed somebody to stand by my side. And my husband is dead or he has run away from me. I say to you, grace. Grace. Whatever thorn is in your flesh, grace. I speak deliverance. I speak healing. Now I pray for you. Lift up your right hand. Now I pray for you. The God of all grace. The, all, the God of all grace. Touch you now. The God of all grace, touch you now. There is a person. The God of all grace. Grace. Be quick, be quick. Grace. Grace. Lord. We have some ashes to help the woman of God. Lord. Lord. I do not ask for anything, but I ask for grace. Grace. Ah, Lord. Rabobo shalama ma 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 ma. Grace. Shanderebe, shanderebe, shanderebe. Grace. 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 Grace, 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 grace. Can I have some more ashes helping the woman of God? Grace, 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 Lord, grace, Lord, grace. 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 She will not fail. She will not fail. You, the Lord says you will not fail. You are breaking through grace. 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 Grace, grace, Lord, grace, 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 Lord, grace, Lord, grace, grace, I release grace, grace, Shandarabosh, Randerebebe, grace, grace. Grace, 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 grace over this girl, grace, Rakasha Tanaba, grace, Randorobo Shaketana Bebe, grace, 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 and grace, and grace. Sharababa kashitaba, Sharababa baba, Randa baba. Grace, grace.
grace grace shandarabo shandababa randa don't come when the cloud has already lifted oh, grace grace rakatalabo shandarababa randa rababa grace grace that will take you around the world grace that will bring you before great men and women grace i see your platform so big so big grace 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 will make you excel among those who are excelling grace grace lord over her daughter she will grow in grace and in rank grace in her life grace the grace of god over your life i release grace the grace that was upon david the grace of god the grace of god the grace of god the grace of god the grace the grace the grace the grace the grace of god the grace yourself i just want the husband i just want the husband to hold her grace you shall not be resisted grace the grace of god abounds in your life where you will fail, you will succeed. Grace, the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace. Let them experience the grace. Let them experience the grace of God. Let him walk in the grace, in the grace of God. The grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace of God. The grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. Shall we stand to our feet? Jesus, the grace. Father God, I thank you. Sharababa. Grace! You know what? Oh, let's just worship him, that song. Let's just worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. of God be without effect let the grace have effect let this grace bring results receive and walk in it the grace of God Grace of God, the grace of God. Now, okay. Now, listen. I'll just pray, and I'll just have a break of about fifteen minutes, and then I'll come to pray for families. I want to pray for you and your children. My assignment is very simple. In the next session, I know, I know. If the devil cannot prevail over you, he wants to prevail over your seed. But he will not. Because as for me and my children are for signs and wonders. And we shall serve the Lord. Joshua says, as for me and my household. Uh, we shall serve the Lord. 
So I, 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 I wanted to continue, but I feel we need to have a break because of what God has done. People need to meditate. They need to meditate on what God has just done. Somebody needs to meditate on this word because the anointing in the second service is different completely because the anointings can never be repeated and they are never the same. And this has achieved what God sent it for. And I want you to, as, 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 as you meditate, I want you to sow a seed for your family as we raise an altar for your family. Now, this is not just your seed, but your seed for your children. I know because of the seed, and the Lord spoke to me through a prophetic word in, in uh, Eswati, now called Swaziland, some years back when my children were very young. And one of them was spotted by a prophetic word, and she was not even there. And I can see as she's growing, she's running, and I, I can see what is coming. I can really see what is coming in all of them. And I talk to each one of them concerning destiny. I talk to them even concerning the little one, the last one. She's 20 years according to uh, the destiny of her life. And she tells me things she cannot even tell. Sometimes even her mother even tells her people. She says, Lord, dad, dad, I'm, sell I'm telling you this because you are my dad, but you are my prophet. And this is what God has spoken to me concerning my future. And then she begins to tell me what God has spoken to her and what she's going to be. And I said, that's why the devil has been fighting you. That's why the devil has been resisting, fighting your star. But the devil will not prevail. You see, the problem is the devil sees more than you see about your children. You look at an ordinary child, but uh, the devil in the spiritual world, they do not see the way you see your children. That's why they, some children, they suffer what you cannot even understand. It's like I've already started the second service. So I want you to prepare a seed for your family. As you raise, we raise an altar. Let it not just be an ordinary offering. This is not just an ordinary offering. It is a seed that you will remember for many years. It will be a reference point. Out of your children will come rulers. They will come millionaires, billionaires, entrepreneurs, prophets and apostles. They will not struggle in the area of getting married. They will not. And they will not get married to wrong people. That's what we are securing concerning the future. Can I tell you something? They will not suffer what you suffered. They will not go through what you went through. Those iniquities are broken and broken permanently. No, they will not suffer what you suffered. The crooked paths are made straight. The mountains are leveled. The valleys are lifted. Father, I thank you for all what you have done. I give you the praise. 